Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here. Now, the one thing that I get over and over and over again since starting this channel is people sending me their home recorded and home produced tracks and asking me about their mixes. Why is my mix not clear? Why is it harsh? Why do things sound kind of muddy? Why don't things sound professional? Now, the truth is, yes, mixing is super duper important. It's one of the most important elements, obviously, of production. But here's the thing. A lot of times when people send me their productions, they'll ask me about their mix and the mix itself might be okay. There are generally intrinsic issues with the production itself, meaning the tracking, the editing, and even the songwriting and arrangement. We have to remember that in order to achieve a great mix, you need to have a great production that's well produced in the first place. And when I say well produced, I don't mean produced out of a big studio or using a bunch of high end gear. I just mean well produced in the sense that it was well taken care of and there was a strict attention to detail in place from the very beginning of the project. Again, it doesn't matter if this is a home produced track or professionally produced track out of a multi million dollar facility, the principle and the concept is exactly the same. When it comes to producing a professional track, it's all about preparation, planning, and having a clear vision for the final product. Now, this is true whether you're recording bands maybe out of a proper studio, or even if you're recording your own music and producing your own tracks out of your project studio or home studio. The process is exactly the same. It doesn't matter if it's live drums and real amps or MIDI drums and amp sims. Again, the idea is that you want to be prepared, have a plan, and have a clear vision for the final product. So just recently, I started working with a brand new up and coming rock band called Raising Arizona, who are based out of New Jersey. And what I've decided to do is document the entire process of the project that we're currently working on right here on YouTube for two reasons. Number one, so you can see the exact process and all of the preparation that goes in to a project like this. And number two, to show you that you do not need to use expensive gear or equipment, or you don't even need a proper studio place in order to achieve a professional sounding production. Even if you're using real amps and real drums and all you have to work with is a small basement, like the one I'm currently in. So this here is video number one in this series, and it documents my very first meeting with the band and our discussion on how we're going to go about this project and all of the details that we cover before we step foot into the studio, before we set up a single microphone, plug in a single amp or anything. So without any further ado, let's dive into the very first meeting that I had with the band and let's hear exactly what was discussed. Let's check it out. I'm supposed to be meeting with the band any minute, in about 20 minutes. Probably going to be late because I live in New Jersey and uh, there's never ending traffic, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So you've done one single so far, right? Yes. Okay, so you need yeah. more stuff. Yes. Definitely. Uh, so we were talking and she says you have three new songs in the works, mm -hmm. roughly. Yeah. One is pretty much almost done, one is 50% of the way done, and another is like 20, 10% done? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is we're going to produce the entire thing from scratch, including pre-production as well. So it's, That part you didn't tell me. I remember that. Yeah, one. everything. Thank you. So, I cried when So you're going to see me like so nonstop happy. until the shit is done. But I want to get these three songs done, if you guys are comfortable with this, by the new year. So I want this over by the new year, completely mixed mastered, so you have it to be released next year. Whether you want to stagger the release or release it all at once, it's up to you. Um, but everything will be done from the beginning, starting now. Okay, great. So now, when it comes to genre, right? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you guys are hard rock kind of teetering on the alternative, mm -hmm. heavier, yeah. heavy, not not like heavy, heavy. I'm just gathering it based on a song I've heard in the past and also the live acoustic thing you guys did. Uh, so the vision I have in my mind, and let me know if we're all on the same page here, is a production that sounds big, right? But natural, so huge natural drum sound, not super fake, not super you know overly polished or overly modern, but classic sounding, right? Mm -hmm. um, like big, in other words, not verbed out, but natural and big natural ambience and real amps. I want yeah. this to be completely real, so and an album esque, if that makes sense. I'm thinking show Muse's first album, Showbiz. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, that's exactly showbiz. that that jo that zone. That's kind of what I was thinking as well. When albums used to actually sound like people playing instruments and not like robots playing. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. Not that there's anything, I do a lot of that too, trust me. I do a lot of crazy technical stuff where it's, that's what that genre calls for. But at least the vibe I've gotten from the music I've heard so far is kind of more just alternative rock 
kind of kind of mm-hmm. stuff, right? Starting maybe next week, I want to start meeting up with you guys. At least, at least uh, Zach, yeah. Zach, and uh, and Brianna, and Will, if, if you can make it, or if, if pretty much anyone who wants to be there can be there. And I want to start doing the pre-production. Okay. So even if the stuff isn't fully written yet, we'll record what we have, right? Just simple in the studio, uh, going di, just to start mapping out the songs. So the recording process is going to be easy because by the time we actually record, everything is going to be set in stone. All the lyrics, all the parts. That way we can get creative with the overdubs and uh, the actual recording process. Sweet. The next thing I want to talk about is the one issue we had with the live production is the tuning issue between you two guys, because you guys are in two <laughs> different tunings. We need to figure that out. Because I noticed on the Frightbox live sessions, yeah. when in the room I didn't notice, but when I was mixing it, when she would play like say an A and he's playing an A, the intonation's out, because you're in a drop tuning? Yeah, I'm in drop tuning. Mm-hmm. And she's in standard tuning. And she's in standard tuning. So we need to, fi- either she needs to be in drop tuning, or, or he needs to be in standard. Because yeah. uh, here's what's gonna happen also, is that let's say he's in drop, I don't know, C sharp or something, if your bass is, you're playing bass on this, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, if your bass is in standard with her, his C sharp is gonna be the same octave as your C sharp because you're not in drop C sharp yourself. Anything that's not her tuning or she, she's not in your tuning, it's gonna be off. Definitely, especially live, you'll hear it live. And I noticed that on the Frightbox live. And it's an easy thing to figure out so that when we start the pre-production, we'll already start, we'll both be in standard, meaning you and her will both be in standard, and you yeah. can come with your bass and you'll be in standard and we can start crafting. Yeah. And then when it comes to recording, it's me, a cakewalk. Uh, she also has a Marshall that's actually really good for that kind of tone, that Marshall kind of tone. The we DSL. Can, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. the DSL is awesome. The DSL. Uh, especially if you plug it into, even the, the amp itself sounds great. So I'll experiment with either going to amp itself or through the cab, meaning like a, an external cab, because you can actually hook it up to like a D30 kind mm-hmm. of cab. From oh. digital back to analog. Back to analog, see, dude. Even though we're using see. digital tools, like when we do pre-production, obviously I'll have Easy Drummer just to have a sketch thing. But when you do your drum tracks, I want your, I want to capture the way you sound in real life. You and know what I mean? Creating like the sound of like Appetite for Destruction, where like Slash is even set, they cannot recreate his yeah. tone from that. It's impossible. Album. No, you can't because yeah. there's a magic to that. Definitely. So I think we're on the same page. Three songs. We'll start sketching it out next week. You don't even have to be there the first few because we just got to get the riffs in there. Oh, you know? okay. But this, yeah. this, we're just, because I know some of the songs aren't done yet, but you know, here's what I've learned from doing this for a long time. You know, the re- this is great, the rehearsal room, but getting done is really hard because it it's is. so loud. And it's like one guy's playing and then it's like, wait, can you play that? You know, it's good to sit down behind a computer, uh, even if you're doing demos yourself, and then you could really hear what you're actually playing. Because yeah. there could be a note that's out of key and you don't notice it when it's loud. It's impossible, right. you know? Yeah. Or or you might notice, oh wait, he's been playing that the whole time. I should be adding a kick there. What the hell? I didn't notice it when we were rehearsing. You know, you know the drill. I think we've we did every band in the, in the beginning. Every yeah. band. We're like, this doesn't sound right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> every band. Like, That's completely normal, man. That's why pre-production is so important. At the point I'm at now, you know what? I love low stress, calm, relaxed, yes. fun. That's all I care about. And honestly, all this preparation is what makes the recording fun and relaxed. Right. Um, so okay, so really quick, just to recap, three songs. Uh, we'll start mapping everything out on Monday. We'll start the pre-production, and then we'll start tying up loose ends and whatever needs to be done. But at least the riffs, at least the guitar p- uh, portion, will. Start Monday, and then when you can swing by the next time, we'll throw the bass. We'll get the bass in, and then Sarah can come by, and, uh, and you're free. You can come anytime you want. You know, uh, then we'll start doing vocals on top of that, and we'll just throw some quick, you know, easy drummer in, just just to have you play along to it. Then then we'll start crafting, or we'll do pre-production with drums as well. I might do that here. I'm not sure yet. I think our work is good out for us. Yes, I'm I'll, excited. I'll let you guys jam. So thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. All right. So in a nutshell, that was the very first meeting that I had with the band Raising Arizona. Again, I have not recorded anything yet. We have not started pre-production yet, but even with that being said, we had a pre pre-production meeting to make sure that we were all on the same page and that everything was laid out accordingly and that we had a crystal clear vision of the project at hand. So the first thing we discussed was exactly how many songs we were going to tackle. And in this case, we're gonna be doing three songs. And the second thing, which is extremely important, especially if you're recording your own music in your home studio, is we set a deadline. So many people start on projects and they go on and on for eternity to the point where you lose perspective on your project. And that's not good. You want to set a deadline and stick to that deadline. Again, especially if you're a one man band or one woman band and you're recording your own music. Number three, we talked about the aesthetic for the production. Super important, especially if you're working with a band or if you're in a band yourself. So many times bands won't be on the same page or they're not clear with their producer or maybe you're working again on your own music and you don't even have a clear vision for your own project. You really want to be on the same page as far as the vibe of the production and the sound of the production that you're working on. You don't want your drummer wanting the record to sound like Periphery and your bass player wants it to sound like Green Day and maybe you want it to sound like The Smiths. You must get on the same page and make sure that everyone is agreeing on the output and the final sound 
of the record, especially if you're working with a producer. Number four, as you could hear, we planned for our pre-production. This meeting was sort of like a pre pre-production meeting and is the antithesis of what a lot of local bands end up doing, which is booking studio time and going into the studio before they even meet their producer. We talked about what we were going to do with our pre-production and also I talked to them and realized that a couple of the songs weren't even fully written yet, so we are going to be writing the songs together at my studio, which is something super important to know because so many times, especially when starting out when I would work with younger bands, is they would come into my studio unprepared and generally the projects would be a nightmare. You don't want this. You always want to plan your pre-production because pre-production is everything. Again, even if you're working on your own music. The fifth thing we talked about in this meeting is we ironed out issues ahead of time. Now, the one thing I noticed about this band a few months back when we did a live recording out of my studio was that the two guitar players had some intonation issues. And this mainly came down to the fact that one person is playing in an open tuning and the other person was playing in standard tuning. So I took note of this back then because I knew if we ever worked together in the studio that this would be an issue. So I brought it up right from the get go. I didn't want any surprises even during the pre-production phase. I wanted to make sure that everyone knew that they have to be in the same tuning. And again, this was taken care of during our meeting before we even started the project. I wanted to make sure that everyone was on the same page with this and that we picked a tuning for the songs. Now, the sixth thing we talked about during this meeting was the guitar tone, as well as a little bit about the drum tone earlier. This is important because I wanted to make sure that everyone, including myself, were on the same page with the tone that we were going for for the recording. And in this case, we're going to be using a live Marshall tube amp. Uh, I just wanted to make this clear so everyone knew we weren't going to be using amp sims on this production. I want to keep this production very, very old school and very natural, yet again, while still being produced in a non-studio space, which we'll be learning more about in this video series. Now, the reason why I brought this up is I didn't want anyone bringing in, you know, a different amp or bringing in something like an Axe Effects or a Kemper or a Line 6 Helix. Nothing against those tools. I use them all of the time and they are amazing. But for this particular workflow, not even so much for the sound, but for the workflow, I wanted to go with real amps. And now the entire band is on the same page, again, well in advance before we even start pre-production. And finally, one of the most important elements of this entire meeting is we talked about scheduling. If you do not schedule in advance, especially when you're working with four different people or five different people, good luck trying to get anything done. Now, this is super important for me because as a producer, I have other projects coming up early in the year, and I want to make sure that this record is in the can, or at least the basic tracks tracked by the end of the year. So there you have it. Those are the seven things that we covered during our initial meeting. And these are all extremely important things that, again, I wanted to iron out before we even started the project to make sure, again, that we're all on the same page. Now, I want to reiterate this. You might be watching this saying, well, this is all fine and dandy, but I don't work with bands. I only record my own music. I don't use live drums. I don't use real amps. The truth is, it doesn't matter. The process is exactly the same. And actually, it's even more important for you to understand as a solo musician or producer that's working on your own music. Because if you're working on your own music, there's no one there telling you when to have it done. There's no one there to bounce ideas off of. So you must have a crystal clear plan and roadmap and a schedule if you want to release your music this century. And again, I'm going to be documenting the entire process of me working with this band from pre-production all the way through to the final master. So you can see exactly how the entire process works in the real world when a project has to get done on time as efficiently as possible. Now, when it comes to producing professional results in your home studio, the truth is there are so many key foundational elements that home studio owners just don't pay attention to and gloss over. And that's why most home studio productions don't sound that great. Now, if you'd like to improve your workflow and produce professional results without having to buy any new gear, I've put together something called my Polish Production Checklist. It's a simple, straightforward PDF guide that highlights all of the areas that most people go wrong so you can avoid these problems and produce better results again with the gear that you already have in your project studio. The Polish Production Checklist is absolutely free and you can have direct access to it by clicking the link below in this video's description. So I'm curious to know, what did you think of my first meeting with this band? Did you find it to be boring? Was it insightful? Have you ever worked in a studio and these are things that your producer just didn't talk to you about? Or are you very familiar with this process? I'm so curious to hear your opinion. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think. So I'll be dripping out videos for this YouTube series regularly as we complete this project in the studio with this band. So if you're looking to improve your professionalism and produce better sounding recordings, stay tuned and catch all the videos in this series. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of the weekly videos 
on all things Metal Rock Production. Until next time, happy pre-production. Happy pre-production.